So today I have someone coming to get a small starter flock of sheep. I think they're just getting a couple of ewes and a ram. But they don't have a livestock trailer, but they do have a plan. So today I thought it may be a good opportunity for me to talk to you some about transporting goats and sheep and some things to take into consideration when doing so. So come along. So I bought my first goat more than 25 years ago and I really didn't mean to buy her. What ended up happening, I went to the sale barn to watch the goats sell got caught up in the moment, accidentally bid on one, won the bid. So now I've got a goat and I've got no way to get it home. So here's what I did. I went down to the local feed store. I bought two of the 16 foot welded wire cattle panels. In the parking lot of the feed store, I bent them into a square, used carabiner clips to clip them and hold them together, put it in the back of my truck, went back up to the sale barn, loaded up my goat and brought it home. It worked great. And I used that contraption for probably four or five more years before I upgraded to something better. So that's one of the advantages of small livestock like goats and sheep. You don't necessarily have to have some type of heavy duty factory made trailer in order to transport them. Through the years, I've had customers show up to get goats or sheep with everything from a $50,000 double deck aluminum trailer to stuffing some goats in the back seat of a compact car. In a moment, we're gonna load some sheep. But first, I want to talk to you about some things you need to consider when transporting small livestock. So probably the first thing to consider is containment. While you don't have to have anything super heavy duty, you certainly don't want to be doing 65 miles an hour down the interstate and have an escapee. So make sure that you have something that will hold them. Whatever you use, make sure that the spacing in it is not more than six inches wide. A goat or a sheep can squeeze through areas that are much larger than six inches. Goats are bad to climb or even jump. So if you're transporting goats, make sure to have something that has a top on, the, on it so that they can't escape out the top. Sheep are not quite as bad to jump, so as long as you have sides that are at least 48 inches tall, you can probably get by with that. So the next thing to consider is whether you have adequate space for the number of animals that you're trying to transport. Goats and sheep pack pretty tightly, but how many you can haul in a given area depends upon the size of the animal, obviously. Also, how hot it is outside. And thirdly, how long of a trip are you going to be making? How long are they going to be in the trailer or in the cage? If I'm making a trip that's under six hours, I know most of the time those animals are going to be standing during that trip and they won't require quite as much room. As a rule of thumb, I try to allow a minimum of three square feet per adult ewe or 2.7 square feet per adult goat. So that means if I'm uh, using a four by five cage such as this one, I'll probably be able to haul five or six. But if I'm using a 6x16 six stock trailer, then I can probably haul 30 or more. Of course, if I have large, heavy bred ewes, I may not be able to haul quite as many. If I'm hauling medium-sized nannies, then I can probably put a few more in there. If you're transporting mamas with small babies, it may be best to separate the babies and carry them in a separate container. Usually a small pet carrier works really well for lambs and kids. Next is ventilation. You wanna make sure that they have adequate airflow. This is especially true in hot weather. I've seen people do it, but I do not recommend putting them in a trunk of a car or underneath the bed cover of a pickup truck. If it's cold or rainy, they may need some type of windbreak. That could be a tarp stretched over a cage or even a piece of plywood, something to break the wind off of them and maybe keep them dry. People often ask me, do they need food or water when being transported? And the answer is probably not, unless it's a really long trip. Usually if it's a trip under six hours, they don't require any water or feed. You may wanna put some hay back there for them to munch on if it's a several hour trip, but they'll probably be okay. So it's also good to provide a non-slip surface for them to stand on when transporting. This keeps them from sliding or falling every time you turn a corner. You can use an old piece of carpet like I have here, or you can also use hay or straw or wood chips. Just something that's not slick and doesn't become slick when it's wet. 
Also, be mindful of the animals being back there. Jackrabbit starts and sudden stops, taking corners too fast or hitting bumps and potholes makes their life really difficult and also puts them in danger of being injured during the transport. Know that they will poop and pee the entire trip and so you will have some cleanup later on. So if you just have a small herd or flock and you don't anticipate hauling more than five to ten animals, probably some type of cage like this that can fit in the back of your truck will work well for you. And you can spend as much money and, and effort as you want to in that. You can just take some cattle panels and, as I said in the intro, bend them, fasten them together with zip ties or baling wire or carabiner clips, and that'll work. If you want to spend some more time and money, you can make a, a welded frame for it, maybe even a sliding gate, and that'll make your life a little bit easier. If you're just hauling one or two animals, you can probably even get by with just an extra large dog carrier like this one. If you use a stock trailer to transport goats and sheep, you may be able to double your floor space by double decking it. This 16 foot gooseneck trailer of mine, I've double decked the front half in order to carry more animals. I simply laid some two by four across the side rails of the trailer. I reinforced that with some bracing so that it wouldn't sag. I put some plywood decking for a floor and then built a crude back gate and ramp to be able to load them. With this trailer, I'm also to use, able to use the nose of the trailer and I can haul around 50 adult sheep and around 60 adult goats. I've been in the goat and sheep business long enough to see some pretty inventive ideas. Here are a few photos that I snapped along the way. Maybe they'll spur your thinking. If you have some stories or thoughts or ideas, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this video, all I ask is that you would give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications for more videos that'll help you succeed in raising goats and sheep. Let's go load some sheep. So here's the takeaway. Because goats and sheep are moderate size, it's much easier and much cheaper to transport them in comparison with larger livestock like cattle 
or horses. There are a lot of do-it-yourself options for being able to transport them and to do it pretty cheaply. For more DIY ideas regarding handling system and catch pins for goats and sheep, check out this video. And if you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama and you're looking for goats and sheep, maybe a starter herder flock or maybe additional breeding stock, give me a call, see what I have available at the time. And if I have something that'll work for you, you can make the trip and bring your hauler, whatever it may be. As always, thanks for watching. Happy farming.